Hello everyone. Welcome to OpenJS World 2021. Hope you are doing well. Let's do the basic introduction of us before we tell you why we need 10 minutes of your time. So hi, this is Sapna and I'm the technical head at Node Expert and I have Prabal Raghav with me who is a technical lead at Node Expert. So uh, the topic that we are going to present today is event-based communication in microservice architecture. So microservices. So they have a lot of different architecture pattern. Every microservice has their own architecture pattern customized to the requirement. We would like to take this opportunity to talk about our journey, journey from monolith to microservice architecture application that use event for IPC. We would be taking an example with a similar use case as we face in our live project. So what better example than a retail industry? So uh, let's talk about an application that lets you order things, pay for it online, deliver it on address. So to start with, we have monolithic architecture. So in a, in a monolithic architecture, there is just a single service or server on which all the model business logic, read and write operations happen. So you may have multiple instance of uh, same server running on load balancing in term in the form of horizontal scaling, but it is still on single server. This architecture might be suitable for smaller and simpler application, but not for large enterprise grade application. It will run into tons of problem. Let's see how. But before that, let's see how ordering something will look like in a monolithic world. First, we make sure payment is paid. We place the order hence and after successfully placing the order, we independently update the inventory, generate bill and schedule delivery. All the IPC calls are like normal function calls since they are on the same system. It is definitely a lot of simpler to implement from an infrastructure point of view. It can be tempting to begin with this initially if application is on MVP phase or POC phase or if the application will solve the simple problem. So that is how we started. We have written, uh, so yeah, that is how we started. So if you look into the diagram, you can you will be seeing uh, UI interacting with single server where we have all the methods written. So uh, we have given you example of how we have written it on the left hand side, but there are certain disadvantages to it. This however does not work if the business problem you look to solve is large and complex difficult to implement continuous delivery with single since a single module change need a complete redeployment of the application and retesting it. A single module failure can bring down the entire system. This would not have a scale well for us. So that's why we moved to microservice architecture. So microservices are loosely coupled services integrated to be part of larger application. Microservices can follow different design pattern and philosophies. Let's take the simplest design pattern with as less possible infrastructure component. So that is how we also moved here. So let's break down our single service. So in, in our previous example, you have seen, we had a single application server where we had all the functions written, but here you can see we have broken down our, uh, you know, independent module into various microservices. So we have, and in each microservice has its own database. A simple design will use request response synchronous communication as means for different services to interact. This will be beneficial as it needs lesser infrastructure component. You don't have to maintain message queues, even stream and even source. Comparatively easier, easiest of all the microservice pattern to develop, test and deploy. This lets us independent, independently develop and release services. If one service crashes, the application still stays running. Although synchronous communication between microservices is simplest, the biggest advantage we get acknowledgement of requests being made. So it enable faster, you know, enable CI CD, isolate fault tolerant, better, faster development, testing and deployment process. There are still lots of problems with this pattern. Read and write operation will take more time since we are now waiting for acknowledgement from each service we call. There are high chances of us getting error or timeouts if the service being called is under a lot of stress or down. Since much aggregation happen over the network, we need to be best spoke backtracking to ensure transactions are followed in an operation. For example, let's assume 
an order being placed the payment is done successfully but there is an issue in order service let's say it is down we have to backtrack the payment and initiate a refund this need to be coded manually and is needed to be ensured for every operation that has multiple service call in it does this achieve all that we were looking to achieve in a microservice definitely not we have just distributed our monolith over the network uh, which has further decreased its performance we did get some benefit over it but still things are tightly coupled so in order to fix the issue let's add the event based asynchronous call rather than a request response synchronous call uh thank you sapna for building all that up so even based communication uh why even based so this uh method of uh, communication in microservice architecture models the real world very well you can take examples of lot of different sectors in real world not related to microservice or engineering but they do uh but they do follow this event based uh, communication really well you will never see an accountant uh, deleting old records you will obviously see him adding new things maintaining the old data as well same thing happens in a contract you don't uh, cross off things in a contract you make amendments or you make addendums to it as we call it uh so everything old and new is, is still there and <clears throat> even if you take uh, example of libraries uh, for example there is a library called redux it also does this event uh, based communication really well so uh, so in event based communication there are producers consumers and an infrastructure component that could be rabbitmq msq or uh, apache kafka that uh, that handles your uh, events or messages so a producer produces event a consumer consumes an event uh, but a producer might not know who the consumer is and the consumer themselves won't know how, what all different consumers are uh, and they pass this information using that infrastructure component uh, <clears throat> so um, so so when we replace this request response uh, with an event uh, we could have done a bit old pub sub implementation using rabbitmq or redis but we instant went for an event stream because we know it would be much more feature proof because event stream can do a lot more and also a pub sub uh, so hence we choose apache kafka as an infrastructure component to help us out and so let's see an example uh, let's see how our um our microservices map up to an event uh to an event driven communication uh so so in this uh what do you think would happen uh in an application ui if an order is placed that order would uh, hit the payment service first let's assume the payment is successful uh the ui would be acknowledged then and there and an end user would see a successful successful message on the ui without seeing um uh without seeing what happens uh, to the downstream services then the then the producer produces an event and uh, uh and the order services consumes it order services does uh, its business logic and it further produces an transactional uh event which make sure that the other downstream services that we consume that event they don't fire their own event in the process thus maintaining a transaction loop so let's say what were to happen if an uh, if an inventory service or the billing service was to get down in this case um in this case uh, you would uh that you would queue up all the events to that service and once that service is back up it would start to consume it. so no communication uh communication failure would have happened uh kafka does that it maintains all the things in a queue for something that is not working <laughs> and uh all the services would be uh, would be in the sort of same state uh so now let's see uh what were to happen if uh, to an end user we need to show updates on his ui uh what we can do so what we did was uh we attach something called as the uh attach something called as the websocket service this websocket service uh was responsible for uh pushing things on the ui so rather than ui pulling the backend for uh, the data this web socket service itself pushed changes on the ui when the time was right 
So once all the transaction for a particular placing an order was complete, it would then it would the WebSocket service would update the UI and show an order successful message. The order successful message would not have been there. You could have seen something like order order pending, but uh, this is how we can update the UI and it would have been reactive. The end user might not even have to refresh the screen and reloading the screen. Uh, refresh the screen and this would have just updated his uh, UI very smoothly. This uh, this procedure can also be uh, also be um, expanded to use something like a materialized view, or if you have a very complex list page that is that is compromised of data from different services, which obviously takes time if you take uh, the request response approach. So you can uh, so you can create a service and push all that aggregated data to that service, which is further consumed by this WebSocket service and updates the list on the UI and it does that in a fast manner. So that's how it is. We started from a basic monolith for our POC and we moved all the way up to an event-based structure uh, for an app when it started to go so we could scale it easily. So um, uh, let us know if you have any questions, slackers. Uh, uh, and until then, uh, thank you for listening to us.